All right. Welcome back, everyone, back to the blue stage. It is my honor to present to you Emily Jung from IBM. She will be uh, your speaker for the next 35 minutes. And uh, Emily, after the talk, you can head outside to the Hip Space booth and have a Q&A with everyone who's interested. Thank yeah. you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. This is my second time to be here, and I really enjoyed the last time. So I know it's like um, next week I'm heading to Code One, but I really want to come. So I made uh, some special effort uh, to be here, and then I will. If you have any questions, and find me after the talk because I'm going to leave uh, early tomorrow morning. Okay, in the next 35 minutes. Uh, I'm going to take you through the 12 fact app with micro profiles. I'm Emily Jiang. I work for IBM. I'm based in the Hersley lab in the UK. Uh, I work on micro profiles since uh, quite the beginning. Uh, it's uh, October 2016. So I uh, basically I did the first specification is called a micro profile config, and uh, and then set up the process and etc. for the micro profile. Uh, specifications. Um, I work on um, also work on the um, Open Liberty, which is one of the leading implementation of micro profiles. Uh, who else know micro profile? Okay, not too many. Who knows um, Open Liberty? Nobody. Wow, I have a big job to do here. So Open Liberty is from um, IBM Web Sphere Liberty. So we open sourced in 2017, October. Uh, and it is pure, purely open source. And uh, you can free to download, free, free to use. I highly recommend it uh, go to openliberty.io to learn about it, to experiment it. Um, OK, let's um, uh, have a look at the um, 12 fact app. So in this talk, I uh, first part is the 12 factor app methodology, explain to you what is it. And then second part, I uh, do some live, live code de demo. We'll see how it goes, because we only have uh, 35 minutes. Uh, also, uh, this 12 factor app will deploy to Kubernetes. Anybody know Kubernetes? OK, that's cool. And uh, so you can see the whole service and uh, service um, uh, interaction within the same uh, Kubernetes cluster. OK, 12 Factor App actually is from um, uh, Heroku, and it's kind of methodology. So define, I mean, how to, uh, uh, what is the best um, cloud native application. I mean, how can you, how can you design an application and make sure it's deployed to the cloud and then perform quite well? So this um, is a methodology and also it's best practice. So basically it's a very simple. The 12 factor app basically de define contract between the application and the infrastructure. You know, sometimes the, the lines blurred and sometimes I'm wondering, okay, will this be looked after by infrastructure or I have to look after in my own application. So this 12 factor app just define the boundary. Okay, this, what kind of things your app needs to be uh, take care of, what kind of things your infrastructure uh, should uh, take care of. So once you have bigger overlap, the things can get very sticky. Uh, so this is a kind of formal definition. So remember, it's kind of everything is clear, uh, clearly, uh, I mean, defined. So everybody can, can like follow the instruction uh, for the, the application development and set up environment. And uh, there's a clear contract between the application and the infrastructure. And uh, also the, the other key is uh, make sure you keep the development and the production uh, as similar as possible. So you don't have like a big uh, surprise. So whatever you is perform well in the uh, pro, uh, development, it should perform the same in production. And uh, the other thing is, um, uh, scaling. So the, the infrastructure will take care of the scaling. So you need to make sure, keep in mind, as right, so whatever you design, you need to be stateless. So it could be scale up, scale down, and it should come and go at any time. So 
also re uh, always remember the scaling problem, the scaling, scaling cap uh, capability. So this is a 12 factor. So it have 12 things. So that's why it's called a 12 factor. So I will go through each one individually. The first one, code base. So code base, basically, uh, nowadays we all use G Git, GitHub, right, repository. Who knows GitHub? OK, most of us. So when you design a microservice, like, um, do you share the same uh, repository, or you like uh, lump uh, all the microservices uh, together in the same repository, just under different uh, directory? Who 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 design microservice? One microservice per repository. That's great. You got it right. So in this case, you can easily kind of uh, incrementally release it. You can version version control it. You can. Uh, automatically deploy it like uh, to Kubernetes and uh, push it up and the uh, new version. And uh, the other beauty is uh, like uh, if like uh, only two or three people work on the same repo, it's less issue to hit the merging issue, right? You don't have to trap each other tools. So this is kind of one code base. The other thing the dependencies, we talk a lot, a lot about Maven uh, and uh, also a Gradle. And um, who, who is still like a package your third party libraries in your application? Oh, you are all doing well. <laughs> so you always, we should always use Maven dependency to specify our dependency and automatically get uh, the dependency from Maven Central instead of packaging your, your, your third party libraries inside your application. And once you do that, and you just carry that burden with you all the time. So this is the uh, this is beauty about um, let Maven or Gradle uh, resolve the re dependencies for you. The third one, the config. So the the third um, uh, the third um, factor is you should uh, uh, externalize your configuration. In this case, every time you change your config, you do need to repackage your application, upload your application again, and. Um, uh, I assume like uh, the people who use Kubernetes, you need to configure it, uh, different things. Do you put the config in your application or you put the config in the uh, config map? Config map? No? Okay, at least a few, pe few people. Always remember, put the configuration in the config map and you should uh, inject that uh, property value inside your application. So we have, uh, we have a macro profile config. We have a macro profile config to help you inject the um, uh, property. For, uh, I mean, specified in the config map and inside the application. So in this case, like in this diagram here, so in your application, maybe in the development, you just hard code the um, uh, password inside the application for the development and testing. And later on, when you deploy this to uh, Kubernetes, you can specify the password in the config map and automatically can inject that um, uh, property inside the application. So you don't need to change your application, but uh, the password will be updated. The uh, backend services, so nothing is isolated in, in the microservice world. So basically, you have to interact with some other uh, microservices. If you deploy a microservice in the Kubernetes, if it's a standalone, it's not uh, useful because it's, uh, it's almost like it's not needed. If it doesn't need to uh, like, uh, talk to others, and etc., it's very, very unlikely. And uh, normally, you need to interact with the underlying database or call into other services. For this one, and uh, all the all the backend is should be like um, uh, should be configured as well. And uh, in this case, like uh, in this case, like uh, Twitter is a uh, kind of the other uh, external resources. Maybe t Twitter went down somehow, and uh, maybe you can swap in some other communication channel. Uh, such as Facebook, for example. So the, the, the fifth one is build, release, and run. 
So basically, you should, uh, when you design your uh, microservices, you build first, and then uh, you release and you put into the uh, production. So this kind of, you should have a separation, which, which part needs to be, uh, yeah, uh, and then you build, uh, and then you release and you run. And this is kind of quite smooth as well, because uh, you should consider, and this kind of process could be, uh, I mean, executed a few times per day. So it's a very rapid um, uh, kind of CICD pipeline. So you need a special tool to help you uh, with it. So in IBM, we have a micro this uh, this tool, and to help you like, uh, like uh, change your code and automatically kick off a Jenkins build and then like uh, push it to production and do the A-B testing and et cetera. And the processes, I think in some talks, um, uh, is, uh, we uh, some, uh, some speakers also touched these processes a bit. So in the, um, uh, in the microservice world, in the like, uh, service mesh world, and uh, in the Kubernetes world, and uh, you make sure all the processes should be stateless. Basically, the, they shouldn't have any uh, states. Because you got to remember, this uh, service is kind of end up in a port. That port could be destroyed any minute by the Kubernetes. So if it has a state, and then you, you lost everything. So this is, uh, we should always um, uh, keep in mind uh, and make sure, st make sure this microservice is uh, kind of stateless. And uh, uh, the, the seventh is the port binding. So for the port binding, like a microservice, when you deploy a microservice, like a, that is like a RESTful uh, services, and eventually it will be, uh, there will be an endpoint I mean, exposed for, you to, uh, for the end user to poke uh, about it. So when you, like in your development, maybe you bind to 9080, but once you um, put your microservice in the Kubernetes, Kube will auto can like uh, assign uh, uh, another port and etc. So you cannot uh, hard code the port inside the application. For example, service A call into service B. I know in the development, uh, service B is bound to port 9080. Service A hard code the port. Uh, service B is the URL HTTP call, colon slash um, localhost 9080. And uh, once you deploy the two things in Kub um, Kubernetes cluster, it stops working because Kubernetes will manage the port. So you should always use the port binding to make sure you can like bind the port in development. However, in the, in the Kubernetes environment, you have to be able to overwrite that port. Uh, concurrency. So this one is uh, talking about uh, scaling. So basically, it's, um, when a microservice in the, is in high demand and uh, Kubernetes can have the, uh, have the capability to be able to scale up. So later on, if I have time, I can show you like uh, if you uh, change the replica and then you can scale up and, and down all your, your port. So it's, um, uh, the beauty is once it's scaled up and your app should uh, have no other side effect. It should stay up, scale down, and the app should still work without any problem. So that's why the beauty of the stateless. Um, okay, this one is the disposition. So basically, the in the uh, Kubernetes, also in the service mesh um, structure, you need to make sure you treat your microservice as um, cattle, not pet. So each microservice and each port has no identity. So, uh, so any one of them should be the same. Like if you have a service B, if you have a three instances of service B, they should be identical and no unique uh, characteristic. You if you have pet, you know, your cat, you give him a name, and then he's a different behavior, and you know what time he will sleep, or which time he will go out, and etc. If he's get ill, you feel uh, very sad, um, and th that's a pet. So you cannot uh, care, make uh, microservices that way. You cannot uh, bear with microservices uh, like uh, uh, we will have go through the um, uh, remedy period. If the service is not behaving, kill it and replace it with another one. 
So it's no identity. And also, you need to make sure microservice, your service is kind of easy, fast start up, fast shut down, gracefully. And also, it's very resilient. So it's basically bulletproof. You need to make sure your microservice can uh, stay up all the time. And occasionally, even though you still cannot prevent the failure, even uh, very, very extremely circ circumstances in the match uh, go down, but can kill it and stand up another one, business as usual. So this is a uh, disposition. And the dev product parity. So basically, it's, um, in the past, you know, um, before this kind of microservice, and uh, we all work on monoliths, and we have a development team and testing team, and also the uh, production team. And normally, like a developer hand over the code to the tester, and tester say, oh, it's not working. Normally, developer say, it works. It works on my machine. And uh, nowadays, is uh, these kind of things so we do not accept as answer because, uh, because in the um, microservice world, uh, we try to keep the same people to doing all the things, development, testing, and production. Also, we need to make sure the environment is the same. Development and testing and production, you use the similar things. No surprises. And uh, this one is the logs. The logs uh, and, um, is advised to streaming out uh, real time. Uh, so that is kind of, uh, you shouldn't uh, store the logs in the file because the reason is if uh, this port is killed, the file will be gone. So you don't have a log anymore. If you're streaming out, so you, you can use the uh, ELK, Elasticsearch, Search, and uh, Kvana, and et cetera, can, uh, can vi uh, visualize your logs, uh, can get uh, logs analyzed. So this is, um, this is logs. So the final one, uh, admin pr processes. So this, um, uh, this one is purely to, um, uh, to say, actually, it's for some one-off tasks you shouldn't bake into the application. Like a database um, migration is a kind of one-off. You should not develop, uh, put inside your application code and only execute once. For that kind of process, it should be like uh, automatically the Kubernetes job and uh, do not put into the application. Uh, so this is um, 12 factor. So uh, in summary, so you can have a quick look. Like, uh, so most of the things, if I don't put in the micro profile, most of the things like uh, either uh, the first one is managed by the GitHub uh, repo, and then the Maven, and then config backing service and processes that can be managed by, uh, su uh, supported by micro profile, uh, and build a release run, so that's kind of the process and the port binding and disposition be helped by micro profile. Concurrency is Kubernetes, and the dev prod parity is another process, and the logs process, admin processes is also the best practices. So this is to a factor up after like uh, talking through it and uh, have a look, it's no, no rocket science. So it's a, um, it's, uh, because the 12 factor app has been around for a while, however, people talk about it, but uh, there's no, um, I mean, uh, no real like uh, code demo or what, how do you achieve this? So today I'm giving uh, you a live code demo to, to show you how to achieve like uh, create a 12 factor app. Okay, uh, before I do a coding, I quickly go through the micro profile config. So config is purely provide a way to externalize your configuration from your microservices. Um, there's two ways to uh, inject your config. So the first one is uh, use the programming um, uh, lookup. So, so you can just uh, call in the code, you can call config provided or get config, you get all the config. And then you can see, okay, I want my, the, val the property called my prop, and then you can do a config to get value, get that value. And uh, you can, if you are a CDI fan, and uh, you can use the annotations to directly inject uh, my dot string dot properties. So you can inject uh, the um, uh, properties. Uh, so it's uh, 
this is the second one. Is um, no, it's the CDI. Is uh, sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, the uh, window swapped. Can you can you switch back the presentation window? Sorry. So. So it's a presentation window. Okay, uh, that will do. Um, okay, you can see the um, first one is the static, um, the static config. So basically, you can inject uh, the uh, property, but it will stay uh, the, uh, as a value. If later on the um, my static uh, property value change, you won't be able to get it because it's only inject ones. The second one is the inject uh, provider, which is a proxy, which is a wrapper. And if the dynamic prop change, uh, then you can see the you can see the new value. So in the in the picture on the right hand side, there is a, I want to say the config sources they are layered. So different config sources has different priority. So the, the um, in the macro profile config, if you package a macro profile dash config dot properties on your class path uh, in the in the wall file, it automatically read the config uh, file config all the configs inside. However, its the pri priority is low, uh, and uh, there's a system property and the environment variables has a higher priority. System property is a priority. Coding is 400, a higher priority, and then can overwrite the, uh, the what's the package the inside the application. So this is um, uh, config. So this uh, the second one is the fault tolerance. So fault tolerance is uh, provide a way to make your microservice resilient. So using these annotations and uh, very simple, no any coding, you just. Uh, Annotate your code with these annotations. Retry, basically, is retry a, f a few times uh, uh, and uh, to see whether you can get a success. Circuit breaker, so after a few, a few failures, and uh, there's a kind of circuit breaker policy, and the circuit breaker will open, and then it will prevent an indefinite wait. So once it's open, you will get an immediately um, uh, error back. So you would not have to wait for a long time. And the book ahead, so this is kind of limit the resource you consume. So lim limit how many thread your, your microservice uh, should be able to consume. And the timeout, so need to make sure when you call into another service, if that service cannot reach within the same, uh, within like a certain time, you will get timeout exception, and then uh, uh, even though that uh, eventually written, however, the result is will be discussed, got it. And then the final one, the fallback. Fallback is like, um, you know, when you watch um, <coughs> uh, uh, watch Netflix, sometimes like uh, you, you can see is suddenly you got a glitch, or maybe it's a kind of is a lower the resolution and etc. So that's kind of fallback mechanism. So basically, the the previous uh, method is not working and fall back to a different one. And um, okay, it's demo time. We we'll see. I will see how how much time uh, I uh, I have here. So before the demo, I show you the, um, uh, I have a microservice already here. So I have a microservice, basically it's a listen on port 9080. Uh, so it's a demo B. So see the just a printer time, I see the, uh, uh, how many times that is invoked, uh, and etc. cetera. And, uh, in, and then and sometimes it's not working. Uh, however, I really want to use it, uh, and uh, we can see like uh, this is a 
um, Open API, so micro profile Open API automatically provides a way to like display, okay, what uh, kind of API you, you provide. So you can see here, I have a, I have a operation called hello and a written a string. So now in my, in my app here, uh, actually is uh, what I uh, demonstrated to you is a 12 factor app B. So here, and uh, it's a JAXRS resource, uh, and uh, you can see here. Can you see the window okay? Oh, too small. You can see that. It's still too small, right? Oh, okay. So you can see here, uh, I click on this. So this is, uh, I use micro profile health check to tell Kubernetes where I'm ready or, or live. So this is a JAXRS um, um, application. So this is my this is my endpoint. So you can see uh, I I only have one uh, endpoint. It uh, says hello. You can see this okay, right? Yeah. Okay, make it bigger. Okay. Now uh, I already demonstrated uh, demonstrated like uh, the. Uh, App, uh, app B, how is it, how is it like? Now, uh, I'm going to uh, create another microservice uh, calling into app B. So I have this, this one. So the first thing, uh, I create a new class and uh, call it a service A, app, and uh, interface application. Oh, no interface. So, and then I do an application. application path to a slash demo okay and then next one uh, I want to next one uh, I want to uh, create a service B Client. So that's uh, in my endpoint, I can call it. So I know the service B uh, endpoint, I have a public string hello, right? And uh, I registered a REST client. This is another micro profile uh, spec. So this is a kind of uh, help you to do a uh, type safe client. So I registered that. And now I just need to create an endpoint. I create a service A endpoint. This uh, you see the this is all stateless. So so this is my endpoint. I see B. Oh, 
or A. And uh, in here, I do a public string call service. Through the exception. Okay, so in here I want to call service B. How do I do it? Okay, this one I do a get. Also, is the jack size uh, endpoint produces media type dot text. Okay, now I want to call service B. It's very easy, I inject service B. Inject. Rest the client. I do, I say service B client, service B. Inject is the CDI. Anybody know CDI? Okay, good. Okay, and now I just do a service B dot hello. Return. So this is my microservice. And uh, you might think, uh, okay, I register my client and uh, inject the client. Where, where do you call it? Where is the, how do you bind it? Okay, the binding all being here. So basically this, uh, you, you can see, uh, this is a service B client. So fully qualified class name, the service B client ma match this one. And then MP rest slash URL, so this is a uh, is a band to that uh, port and URL. So this is all you, you need to do. So uh, if now I go to here, so this is all in um, uh, Open Liberty. I do a Maven Clean install. See, it's finished. And now I can do uh -huh. Oh, sorry, I was in the wrong wrong folder, uh, wrong file, wrong. I should go to the here. Just uh, build it. Okay, where is the where is the downloading and etc. Okay, here. So it will start a server and stop it. So we can can start start this one. 
So you can see it's um, Bantu here. Yeah, I'm uh, get it done. See, it worked. We call into service B. Uh, and um, uh, I quickly go back to my presentation. I have all this um, uh, demo working, uh, and uh, it's in my GitHub repository. And uh, the, I don't, uh, I didn't um, have enough time to show you Kubernetes, uh, all this kind of deployment YAML. It's all in my in my GitHub repository, so you can download and build it. And then you, if you want to know micro profile, the link there. And if you want to learn Open Liberty, or Open Liberty has a really massive, uh, really wonderful guide to teach you step by step how to use the micro profile specifications. And then you just go to openliberty.io/guide, and you can see all of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, so enjoy it. Thank you.